Okay, so um, today's video is a bit different. Um, there's a website called Quora. Um, it is really good, um, a good alternative for Facebook. And basically the purpose of that website is to ask questions. I was active there a few years ago, but then um, work and study showed up and um, I got extremely preoccupied. So um, I still uh, try to answer questions um, time and again, but uh, I decided that how about um, I do these weekly Quora answer sessions um, so that I don't have to type too much. There's enough typing while um, doing scientific essays and typing research papers and I can avoid that while still answering the questions. Um, so for this week, um, we have Luis Trigero requested, um, do you still remember the place where you first met your best friend? Um, I think school. Yes. John requested, uh, if your friend will give you a set of answer keys claiming that, okay, now this one is nice. If your friend will give you a set of answer keys claiming that it will come out on the set exam, are you going to grab the opportunity? Why or why not? Um, yeah, so, um, this happened, uh, recently, um, I had an exam yesterday and my best friend had sent me that test bank um, a few months ago um, and most of the questions were from there and I had forwarded it to my teacher and she knew it already so um, I had already attempted those questions most of those questions and um, but then since they were marked uh, and a part of me wanted to submit it but then internally I felt like I was cheating um, so I asked my teacher if she would like me to do them in front of her. Um, she told me that it's all right. It's just for our understanding and revision and that I can do it and submit the questions to her. Um, so, uh, the question is basically asking two aspects. Number one, um, the opportunity at hand and I think um, your ethos um, basically what do you think is the right way to go about things um, if you value personal benefit how do I explain this um, like in philosophy you have um, two ways regarding um, an action for example uh, if I have a goal to achieve um, one way would be to follow the right steps in order to achieve the goal and the other basically focuses on the result um, and you don't really care about the steps you take as long as uh, your result is for the greater good all right um, so um, I just cannot process um, how can the result be good if inherently your decisions are not I don't think so um, motivated by something else than your self-interest um, yeah pretty much crazy um, Fernando Ayoro requested do all human beings have memories they would only tell their best friends um, that's a tricky one uh, I share most of the stuff with my friends uh, that I remember at that moment um, but most of the time I'm repeating those same things uh, when I'm talking to my brothers um, I don't know how to answer that uh, do all human beings have memories that they would only tell their okay so uh, if for example they're talking about a certain incident from our past um, uh, then of course uh, I mean as long as you're comfortable talking about that memory um, that's fine um, 
and as long as um, you think that you can trust that person, that's right. Marcelo Philippe, I don't know if it's Philippe or Philip, requested your answer to this question. How has COVID affected your friendship? Um, for once, um, it taught me um, that people make mistakes and it's okay to let go and forgive. Um, in a way, it has helped me become a bigger person in terms of becoming a better friend. Uh, for example, um, I was not in contact with a lot of friends pre-COVID, but then it made me realize that it's okay, life happens, and sometimes people do things that um, they think that's best in that moment of time, and I think being a friend, it's not really our place um, to be judgmental about them, um, and they might have their reasons, and if it wasn't that a big deal, um, it's fine, reach out to people, life is just too short, I think that's the way, if you're talking about um, isolation, uh, not meeting people enough, uh, I don't usually meet many people, so I have a limited um, friend circle, and I think that has been constant most of my life with a few ups and downs. I think uh, real friendship should stand the test of time and no matter what life throws at you, um, COVID was just another incident um, out of the blue. Um, so I hope I answered what you were looking for. Andre Frank Ortiz Adams requested you to answer what misunderstanding in someone else's life caused a friendship to be ruined? What misunderstanding in someone else's life caused a friendship to be ruined? Um, I don't think I understand the question properly. Um, if I don't know if he's asking if uh, somebody has a misunderstanding that caused my friendship to be ruined, um, I think I, I I think that that's the cause of most of the friendships um, getting messy. For example, um, I believe that uh, if there is a misunderstanding that should be cleared by those two friends instead of um, other people butting in and making the matters more worse. I don't really know how to answer it properly. Maybe I haven't understood the question. I'm going to give it more time and then I'll see if I can come back to it. In your own understanding, what's a best friend? Valentine or oh, Valentine, okay. That's just too rigid of a definition um, to lock a person into, you know what I mean? Um, I believe that we've got friends for different phases of our lives. For example, uh, I don't think that a single person could uh, be a friend to all your um, needs for example uh, I have friends that are outgoing and I'm not but then I also have friends that are more introverted um, that would rather sit and talk rather than go out and be all energetic and life of the party kind of thing so I believe that a healthy balance should be maintained between different types of friends because I don't think that it's fair to burden one person with all the sh** that goes into your life. Yeah, I think um, as long as all the friends remain civil and 
respect each other boundaries and respect each other's times and understand that they are human too i think you don't need one particular best friend um i think every friend is unique and they all bring their own best parts to the table um mary stands very requested how did you get over your best friend ghosting you um i think i wouldn't say ghosting because um i don't really believe that people people do ghost okay and that's not healthy that's that reflects a kind of immaturity i think so but then again um as we grow up uh, our lives become so much more uh, unpredictable that um we eventually lose track of time or you can see we don't have the leisure to talk to people as frequently as we have been doing in the past like um i don't talk much to my friends like i used to when i was a teenager i think so um and sometimes friends grow out of each other um sometimes um you and your friend might grow apart um and they don't know how to communicate with you um so yeah um a few years ago um i would have been all like aggro kind of thing about it but then it's okay um i think people have their own issues to deal with and most of the time my friends ghost my best friend does that um randomly he pops out and then he pops in and that's okay it doesn't mean that the love isn't there that the friendship isn't there um it's just that at that particular moment in time they are dealing with a lot on their plate and and since they know that i am the constant in their life and that they will reach out to me when they need me and that's just it it's the same way uh when at times i don't communicate with a lot of my friends like i have this friend uh that i haven't met since the last 6 years 7 years i think and uh, most of the time when he calls i'm either at the university or i'm teaching um or i'm sleeping but most of the time i am unable to return his calls and i feel pretty about it and um uh, but then i reach out um the moment i get time or the moment um i have enough space to communicate with him effectively i give him a call or i text him and that's just it um i think a part of growing up is understanding that another person uh is not particularly um uh, putting you through stuff that you feel uh because most of the times um people are dealing with their own mess and i think we should cut them some slack uh what happened to respectfully disagreeing with others and still being friends melanie total turtle turt the r is missing though um okay melanie um i have no idea about it um i think um yeah i don't know what um, what's the big deal about it i mean um people have their own views um and they have the right to voice their opinions and their views and it's okay to disagree with their point of view but it's not okay to disrespect them um or to judge them um i have a friend uh, at the university and uh, most of the times we have uh, contrasting views like 
he's talking about the North Pole while I'm at the South Pole. And we both see our differences, but then we both agree that we are both different people and uh, that it's okay to have a different point of views. At the end of the day, um, I have his back and uh, he's still my friend. Um, it's okay to disagree because um, I think it is important to understand that you don't have to be friends with your mirror image and you don't necessarily have to make an enemy out of a person who disagrees with you and that it's okay um how can i help a friend who is addicted but is in denial graham sealin said um you can't and uh, if you ask me i i don't think it's your place um the point is this that there are people better suited for this job uh there are therapists and there are addiction counselors and i think your job as a friend is to understand the basic point of addiction that you don't really know you're an addict when you're an addict and a normal person cannot know what it feels like to be an addict unless and until they have attended one of those AA meetings or have sufficiently spent time with addicts or addicts in recovery and try to understand um the general um what how should i call it the rationale behind uh, the actions that those people took when they were addicted because uh, addiction by chemistry and addiction psychology is completely different and you can't just throw big words at a friend you know he's addicted like you just can't tell them that they're in denial because obviously that they, they don't see themselves as an addict and the only thing that you're damaging is their comfort zone in calling you a friend and being open about what they're feeling and i think uh whenever we are addicted to something all of us are in denial um you don't necessarily have to see addiction as um an opioid or a drug we are all addicted to stuff in our own ways i think uh addictive cycles are really hard to break because somewhere or the other they are supplementing our need that we uh lack in our real life um so uh the best thing that you can do is that you can talk to a friend and if they agree you both can go to a center uh or a rehab facility and they are they can help your friend better mm, mike requested this one is interesting um what should i do about being invited to a surprise birthday party of a friend i'm not particularly close but i feel obligated to go I doubt I'll know anyone there but this friend is president <laughs> but this friend is president on student government with me at my school. I am the vice president now my god party politics. Um Okay, here's the thing. A person has a birthday party and they have invited you. It doesn't matter if you're close or not. If they think you're a friend and if you think of them as a friend, um I think you should be there to celebrate their um what do you call it happiness or their joy um i doubt i'll know anyone there uh you don't have to know anyone there you are there for your friend and that's what matters um but if you're not super close or if you're uncomfortable you can always always be open about it and if they are your friend they, or if they think you are their friend uh i don't see the issue there because they're going to understand your point of view but if you're thinking about uh he's the president and you're the vice president that i don't think that your uh intentions are in the right place because um i don't think that it's important 
what designation your friend has i mean why would that matter he's your friend that's his birthday party you should go but if you're not super close i mean he's still an acquaintance you're both on good terms uh you can have a good time there um i don't see the issue here how have you found new friendships in your retirement <laughs> I'm going to answer that um in the next 25 years. Peter Tim requested, should you be honest and tell your friend the truth about this spouse and risk the friendship? Okay. The number of ways that I can interpret this question I don't want to go there. Too dark. I don't know. I think you should always be honest. I think that friendship is more about uh trust and respect respecting the other person as well as yourself to be honest but at the same time respect their boundaries um I don't think that anybody would harbor that hatred against you for being honest with them unless um they don't see you in a good light um and uh how should i put it for example if my best friend knew that my wife was up to some shady thing and i didn't know and he knew and if i would find it out later i think i i think i would not like that i would put it this way like if my friend's wife was doing something that would hurt him Um I think I would inform him but I would not jump to conclusions I would just let them know what I know and that it's up to them to find out um if it were me um I think the general human reaction would be anger and hurt and denying that thing and maybe a possible fallout um because wife and friends and most of the time in our society we prioritize wives over friends so i don't also know the dynamics of your friendship for example i believe that i can be honest with my best friend and i mean we have this room where we can be honest with each other without thinking of the possibility of the friendship going south um i think that's one of the beauties of true friendship is that your friend gives you the room to be yourself and to speak your mind and uh, you don't have to really walk on eggshells fearing whatever you say or talk about or speak your mind will be held against you so if i were in your place uh i would tell them because if they would find out later that i knew and i didn't tell them i don't think i would have any justification to answer why i didn't tell them <clears throat> Shine Muse requested your answer to this question. Do you really have a best friend? Yeah, I have my teacup. What does it mean when I just got to know the Okay, uh it's taken too much time. See, that's one of the reasons that when I log into it, I totally forget that I have other things to do. Uh other things like preparing for a quiz because it's 3 a.m. I'm not usually awake this late on school days but um tomorrow is the last day of my semester and I have just one exam and that's just it so I'm kind of nervous excited in the moment um and I'm going to continue answering these questions next week